of David Bowie's song. Welcome. As you come in, or if you see an empty seat, if you can fill it so that additional people can fit into the room here, we'd appreciate that. And thanks very much.
Operator, oh, could you help me place this car? See the number on the matchbook is old and faded. She's living in L.A. with my best old ex-friend, Gray. Gosh, she said she knew well and sometimes hated. Well, um, good afternoon. Please know that you are very welcome here to Lake Haven Church today as we gather to celebrate the, the life of Jonathan Page Pauley. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your love, care, and support to and for uh, Tara and for Braden and for Page's whole family. Um, I tell you what, won't we be seated and we're going to pray together while we're seated. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus... You alone are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you for your presence here, right now, through your Holy Spirit, the one the Father sent to be the comforter, our counselor, guide, and helper to comfort, strengthen, and heal those that are broken and contrite of heart. Good Father, creator of all, the only true God, we commit this time and these proceedings to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to read the obituary. Jonathan Page Pauley was born April 21st, 1983. He passed away Friday, March 22nd, 2024. Page lived most of his life here in Eustis. He was in the Eustis High School class of 2001. Page was a homemaker to his wife and son. Page was a talk show radio host and broadcast with Lake County Sports Show on WQBQ. He loved music and playing guitar, listening to some of his favorite bands like Fleetwood Mac, Mastodon, uh, Sublime, and Bob Marley. Page was an avid sports fan, supporting his beloved Texan Titans and Florida Gators football teams and Orlando Magic basketball team. He was a huge history buff, loved watching documentaries, and he loved the beach and, uh, and his family's special spot there at Wilbur by the sea. What Page loved most was his family. He loved being a husband, and a father, Page, was a bright and shining light with infectious laughter, and a, he, was a, he was our comedian. He had the ability to make people laugh, lift them up, and show them how important they are. Page lost his brother, Lawrence Lane Pauley III, in 2008, 
and he has had a broken heart since, never really getting over his death. Paige is survived by his best friend and high school sweetheart of 24 years and wife of 16 years, Tara Pauly. His only son, Braden Lawrence Pauly. His parents uh, and his uh, father, Lawrence or Lance Pauly, mother Betty and Beverly, niece, uh, Salem Rainey Pauly, nephew, Malachi Dagan, Dagan Pauly, niece, Harley Quinn Brumfield, nephew, Wade Wilson Cruz, his in-laws, Robert and Tony Wright, Darwin and Angie Fitzpatrick, sister-in-law Cynthia Howard, sister-in, uh, sister-in-law Regina Brumfield, brother-in-law Nico Cruz, and by numerous extended family, his uh, band of brothers and close friends. So while Malachi and his band get ready to perform a special song, we have a special music request that's going to be playing, after which we're going to welcome Father Medina to the platform to lead the scripture service.
Jay Smith spreading lies We face the path of time And yet I fight And yet I fight this battle Good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Father Gilbert Medina. Um, from 2010 until 2014, I had the great blessing of being a part of this beautiful county and to be a pastor at St. Mary of the Lakes Catholic Church before I was transferred uh, to All Souls and now at St. Peter Catholic Church's pastor in DeLand. I want to say what a humbling experience it is for me to be up here before you, never having had the opportunity to meet uh, Pastor Shannon, this beautiful community of, of faithful, and, um, and yet it's a sad time because for the first time it's having to separate ourselves from, from Paige, who we all love and continue to love and will always love through, through pictures, through DVD, through fond memories, but to his beautiful family, to Tara, to Braden, to the family, uh, as we were gathered in the prayer room just before this service began, I shared with them, and then I share with you, there is never going to be sufficient words from any human being, uh, from a minister, from a priest, to comfort the family that is grieving the loss of a loved one. Death is inevitable for each and every one of us, but in that inevitability of death, we do have this opportunity to connect the pain, the sorrow in all of our hearts with the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is why we gather to connect the pain in our heart 
and the upset as is shown today through the Holy Bible of an individual who didn't find it in her heart to go receive the Lord when her brother had died. And so we offer each and every one of you the pain, the sorrow in your hearts to the tender love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a sad time, but yet at the same time, we hope in the power of the resurrection as we journey very, very quickly toward Easter celebration and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ from the dead. And so I will begin with an opening prayer. My dear friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray asking God to gather our dear brother H to his merciful heart. And so we pray, Lord, in our grief we turn to you are you not the God of love who opened your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant, Paige, who has gone to his rest in the Lord. You've called him out of this world. Lead this beloved son to your kingdom of light and peace and count him among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from sacred scripture, the gospel of St. John, chapter 11, verse 17 through 27. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who believes and lives in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world, reading through verse 27, the Gospel of John chapter 11. We see that the three, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, very close, such a close intimate union between the three that even Jesus and his disciples had no problem hanging out at their place, feasting off of the goodness, the bounty of their generosity, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus to the point that even when Lazarus passes away, Jesus weeps at his grave. And the Jews say, see how the Lord loved him. And so the Lord Jesus was very close to Martha, Mary, and Lazarus in Lazarus' lifetime. But please take note that even in Lazarus' death, our Lord is still very, very close. But what is very, very notable to me in this passage of Scripture, since I was 20-some years old, and it was a Christian minister who had stated something about this passage of Scripture, that whenever Lazarus died, Jesus, when it was convenient for him and his mysterious plan, eventually makes it to Bethany after Lazarus dies, not before, to maybe pray for him and pray the sickness away, the Lord purposely arrives at Bethany at the right time. He knows that Lazarus has gone to sleep. He has died, and so he makes his way to Bethany. And I always dote 
and meditate on that part that when Jesus comes into Bethany, Martha goes to receive him at the entrance to this little town immediately, but Mary sits at home. And one spiritual writer, Christian uh, minister, stated that possibly, possibly, the reason why Mary didn't go with Martha to receive the Lord at the gates of Bethany is because Mary was upset with the Lord. And the Bible says that Mary stayed at home. We could read what we want to read inside there, but uh, for many, many years I've thought about that, that at a time of death, there's so many emotions that surge. There's grief, there is physical pain, and you know what, it's okay to be upset. And it's something that sometimes in, maybe in a Christian gathering, we shouldn't talk about the reality of, of being upset and angry with the Lord, but when you think about it in the Old and in the New Testament, there was men and women touched by God, anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, who became upset with the Lord. And I think about the words of this Christian writer many, many, many years ago that in his estimation, the reason why Mary sat at home and didn't go with Martha is because she was upset with Jesus. We don't know. But the Lord does come in his glory, in his tenderness, and in his love, and he embraces their grief. And when I say that the Lord embraces the grief of Mary and Martha and the weeping Jews is because that he loved Lazarus so very, very much. Page is, not was. Page is a son of God. He is important to the Lord. He's important to this gathering here today. But he's so much more important and loved by our Lord. And then secondly, the pain and the grief that we experience in our life uh, because of his passing and maybe the upset, maybe, maybe even some anger. I was angry, not at the Lord, but just angry that uh, I buried a few years ago my two baby brothers and I, I looked into their eyes as they're about to die and they're looking at me, one of them asking, do you think I'll go to heaven and I said, if you trust in Jesus, yes, you will go to heaven. And then he started crying and tears streaming down his face. And he says, I hope I can go there, Gilbert. And I said, by God's grace, Roy, you will go there. And so that pain comes back to me when I stand before faithful God's people in the face of, of death itself, of this son of God, son of the community of faith, who is loved and perhaps in that love carrying some upset, some pain, some grief, and maybe some anger. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, to weep and to cry is relative, it hurts, and the pain is there. And then with the passing of time, the Lord's grace gives us the strength that we need to keep moving forward, not to forget about the ones that we have lost, but to carry their memory with them through music, through songs, through testimonies, through witnesses of faith, through beautiful pictures, through memories, through DVDs, and to talk about them, especially, especially during the holidays, during Easter, during Thanksgiving, during Christmas. Bring him into the celebration. Bring him into this reality of us who are still alive. And then for those of us who are still in pain, we're in pain like Mary, maybe, maybe not upset because the Lord didn't come on her clock. You know, why weren't you here? At least we know Martha said, why weren't you here? Maybe she was chiding with Jesus. Where were you when my brother was sick? You who raised the dead, you who cast out devils and demons, where were you don't we ask ourselves that question at times? I know I have with the passing of my two baby brothers, and yet God's grace comes in so miraculously, my dear friends, and his strength and his power gives us that <clears throat> to continue forward in the name of the Lord. And so as I close this meditation on Scripture, on the life of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, and Jesus' words, saying, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, this is our hope and this is our promise. 
May we offer ourselves to the Lord, the Son of God, Page, who has gone to his rest in the Lord, and that in this life, while we who remain and are alive, that we continue to love each other, to hold each other with bonds of love, cords of love that cannot be broken, and to carry, not bury, but to carry the memory of this Son of God, this Son of the church who loved the Lord with all his heart, loved by his family, and that as we journey forth, my dear friends, we remember the words of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live and never die. And in heaven, well, the fact of the matter is in heaven, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, there is no crying. There is complete peace and happiness in the presence of our Lord. May this promise, not from Father Medina, but may this promise from sacred scripture from the Lord himself comfort us and guide us and give us the strength that we need in the days, the months, and the years to come to remember the great memory of Paige, who is still very, very much alive, and commend his soul to the tender mercy of God. Amen. Lord Jesus, may the presence of your Holy Spirit lead us to contemplate the power of the resurrection that we will celebrate on Easter Sunday, that in our pain, our loneliness, our anxiety, and our grief, that we know you are there standing right beside us, leading us to the heart of our Heavenly Father. We ask this strength and grace that comes from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have offerings, reflections given by Braden, Polly, Brian, Sedley, and Jake Richmond. Hello. Hello, I'm Braden Polly. Um, I'm Braden Lawrence Polly. My father was a good man. I miss him every day. I remember it was a normal Friday morning. My, my mom woke me up. I was late for school. We wake up, and he was just gone. I will always remember my dad as a great dad, because he was. He was the number one dad. He supported me in all my dreams. He wanted the best for me. He encouraged me to do what I love, which is art. He encouraged me to continue pushing forward even when I knew that I was about to give up. He would tell me to continue going on. Even when times got rough, I would still push on for him because I knew that's what he wanted. I'm so proud of my mom for holding up. I know you miss him just as much as I do. My dad was a great musician and he taught me a lot of beautiful songs. My fondest memory of him was when he showed me the song, The Black Parade. Every time I hear it, I can only think of him. I'm thankful for my cousins who have helped me out during this rough time. And I'm Brian Sedley, um, and I've got everything written out, like Mark told me to. Um, and I just want to go off script for just a second and just say, just in light of Father Medina, what you shared, and just 
you know, Easter Sunday coming up and everything going on. Um, there's a lot of, uh, just a lot of hurt and pain and, and anger and lots of feelings um, that I just, I guess I just wanted to maybe say something, maybe somebody needs to hear this, I don't know, but um, I mean, from the beginning, you know, the Garden of Eden, story of Job, Jesus being tested in the desert. I mean, there, there's an adversary, and I mean, there's a, there's, there's one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and um, this Sunday, we're, we're celebrating that, that death as we know it has been put to death, and, and that's, just angry with death. So, just a little background on being up here. Uh, when the opportunity to speak was presented to us pallbearers, um, really everything in me just wanted to, to hide back and not do this. I hate public speaking, and uh, especially knowing it'd be you know, just kind of a mess leading up to this and have to navigate just the, the weightiness of, of this and, and how personal it is. And, just trying to keep it together and then to make matters worse. Right after I raise my hand, Jake Richmond, who's like the most charming, funny guy in all of our class, says, oh, I'll speak too. So, you know, I've got that for comparison. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but anyways, you know, it's, look, it's an honor to get to do this, um, to speak on my best friend's behalf. And I know God will carry me through this couple minutes, just like he'll carry all of us through the coming weeks and months and years of dealing with this grief. Um, you know, I also know I'm just up here publicly just reflecting on and expressing and, and, and grappling with all of the same things that I know you guys in this room are. That we're really just in this together. We're all hurt and angry and confused in our own ways. But I'm gonna to try to honor Paige, and I, I'm not gonna camp out on, this, on that part too long. I don't wanna go through the sadness, the regret that the other feelings are wrestling through. When I think of these few precious moments I have to share and to honor Paige, I want to at least scratch the surface of sharing what it was like being his friend. But that also kind of feels like I'm preaching to the choir. I mean, for many in this room, you already know at least a little bit of what that was like. It's like that movie, There's Something About Mary. Paige is basically Cameron Diaz from that movie when it came to having friends. He, he would hate to hear me make this you know, ridiculous comparison, but it's true. And you know, I can stand here and talk about just how magnetic of a person he was and, and how welcome he made people feel. Um, you know, but if you knew him, even for 15 minutes. You know, you just felt like, like it was just fate, you'd be best friends with Paige. You know, and for that reason, I just feel so blessed to have known him as I did. You know, for the rest of the time I'm sharing here, I just wanna kinda read a few snippets of stuff I wrote last night to Paige, you know, just saying goodbye. And, you know, maybe just in this act of simply sharing these kinda seemingly random, pointless memories, just the way that we used to talk to each other, um, you know, I just hope in some way it, it spurs your own memories and fondness for Paige and the matchless friend that he is. Paige, I'm... I'm just so grateful that in God's good plans, he, he destined for us to, to be best friends before we were even born. It's just crazy to think about it. You know, you were born April 21st. I was born nine days later. And since our parents were friends, we've always had each other. You know, I think one of my just greatest joys in life is to have you as a childhood best friend. You know, and I'll just shamelessly and joyfully boast that we were each other's oldest friendships. 
It's probably the same for Lane and PJ. And I remember my mom worked for your dad at the funeral home. Every day after school, you, me, PJ, and Lane would walk back to the funeral home to play until our parents finished working for the day. Looking back, it was kind of weird having an occasional old dead guy around when we were playing hide and seek <laughs> in the funeral home on a rainy day. It's still, it's still the most classy establishment in all of Lake County, but you know, we were kids. Mr. Harden even let us, so I mean, you know. Um, you know, but that weird stuff, those, those elementary years, they're priceless. You know, then around, you know, middle school age, when you guys moved West Crooked Lake House and we moved closer to the high school, you know, that was just a, a game changer. That's around when we both started playing guitar, those like epic hours long jam sessions in the pool house and the barn at your house or in PJ's room. They're just unforgettable. And, and I just remember in middle school playing talent shows. Uh, think about when Tara, you know, sang, I think it was a Jewel song or something I remember. And, and we did a Bush song and, you know, those moments of just 90s music and, and right there may have been just the initial budding of the page terror relationship and, and, you know, everything that just went on and developed. I mean, those were just really good memories. We had a, some, some difficult times too, but I was going to skip over all the uh, embarrassing and inglorious moments. And I'm going to just fast forward here to, you know, my wedding in 2012. Um, you're the best, best man a groom could ask for. You and your family were so supportive, even Tara, Tara and Brady from a distance. You were the first of our close friends to get married. And from standing by you at your own wedding until four years later in the day I got married, you set an example and standard for being a loving husband and father. And though this memorial is to remember you in those roles, you did so amazingly as husband, father, and son. I'm always going to remember you as simply Paige Polly. My best friend, my longest friendship. I love you, brother, and until we meet again. Hi, I'm. Uh I'm Jake Richmond, and if uh, if you spend enough time around the Polys, you probably heard a story or two about me. And if you didn't, then we'll we'll just keep it that way. That's that's fine with me. Um, I'm gonna try to make it through this. <clears throat> I first met Paige when I moved from Maitland to Useless. Use Useless. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good start. Uh, from Maitland to Eustis. I didn't have any friends and he was the first kid I met. Well, in my typical fashion, I decided to steal Paige's pencil, pencil box. Mind you, my pencil box was per perfectly fine, but I wanted his. And in Paige's typical fashion, he'd befriended the thief. I became a fixture at the Polly household after that. My mother became a secretary at the funeral home and Paige, Lane, and I walked to and from Eustis Heights Elementary School every day to the Polly residence. Some of the fondest memories I have from my childhood were with the Pollys, Sedleys, and Mortons. I don't know why I received so much grace from these families, but I thank God every day for them. I don't know why God decided to take Paige when he did. I don't know why he decided to take my mother when he did. but I'm eternally grateful for the time I got with them. Maybe that's the lesson I'm supposed to learn. Hug your loved ones. Let that comment set an anchor go. If you've lost contact with a friend, call them. Don't let petty arguments come between you and the love for your family. <clears throat> Sorry. For being as close as we were, Paige and I didn't agree on much. <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely aligned on great films. One of, my, one of our favorites was The Shawshank Redemption and The River Runs Through It. 
The latter was a story of two brothers growing up in the 1920s. I saw a little bit of Lane Page and myself in the characters in the movie. I knew I could never replace Lane, no one could, but I thought I could be there for him and make the pain of losing his brother a little less sharp. <clears throat> in closing, I'd like to share a quote from Red in Shawshank Redemption. Sometimes it makes me sad though, Page being gone, I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. <laughs> Their feathers are just too bright, and when they fly away, <clears throat> the part of you that knows it was a sin to lock them up does rejoice. But still, the place you live in is that much more drab and empty that they're gone. I guess I just miss my friend. Thank you, um, Alex and uh, Jake, Braden. And uh, especially Father Medina, I appreciate you. It's, good. it's been a pleasure to get to know you a little bit um, today. And um, I just wanted to make a comment because that guitar that Malachi was playing was Pages, the green guitar um, that Malachi came and practiced with. And so thank you, Malachi, for you and your team that came to sing that beautiful song. You know, um, we are encouraged in the book of Second Corinthians to look beyond this visible world and to consider the eternal kingdom, it, we're written, it's written this way, it says, For the things that are seen are temporary or transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Let's pray together. Father, as we remember Page's life, like Moses does in Psalm 90, we consider our own very brief mortality in the light of true reality, eternity, and we ask sincerely, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of your marvelous grace, your love, and the salvation that you so liberally and freely offer to each and every one of us. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of that sweet Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen and amen. So, um, by way of instructions, pages will be interned at the Greenwood Cemetery here off Hazelton Road, just down a little way. Uh, please allow the family um, and uh, the pallbearers and Paige himself to, to leave first when that time arises here shortly. Um, and you are invited to follow the funeral procession for, uh, to Paige's committal. Um, there is, uh, you'll also see, if you haven't already signed the physical guest book, there is an option to upload a photo, a memory, or sign a digital guest book, and there will be a QR code there if you would like to do that. Now, you heard that Paige was uh, a talk show radio, um, he was a feature there, and so we have something special for you to listen to um, in, his, in, I mean, in his recent conclusion and sign-off. Paige, yeah, yeah. Guy, playing games. All right, yeah. all right, everybody, next week we got Emma Broom coming in to sing the national anthem. That yeah. is uh, Alan Hayes' granddaughter. We got Jess Fishing Spot on next week as well. Yeah. March 30th, we got Krista Prado coming yeah. in to sing our, our national anthem. Uh, April 6th, we know we will be. It's the 10th annual Amazing Race for Charity. And then June 8th, uh, the Lady Lake Macaroni and Cheese Contest. Oh, yes, sir, where we'll be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody be on their best behavior this weekend. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Great exit Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, and y'all go to church tomorrow. Absolutely. Be good. Chunk. Sounds like a good time, man. It does. So, that's when I'll be back, Paige. Yep. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs> man, have a great weekend. Enjoy this music. And then um, more.
when my body won't hold me anymore and it finally lets me free will I be ready when my feet won't walk another mile and my lips give their last kiss goodbye will my hands be steady when I lay down my fears my hopes and my doubts the rings on my fingers and the keys to my house with no hard feelings when the sun hangs low in the west and the light in my chest won't be kept held at bay any longer when the jealousy fades away and it's ash and dust for cash and lust and it's just hallelujah and love and thought love in the words love in the songs they sing in the church and no hard feelings Lord knows they haven't done much good for anyone kept me afraid and cold with so much to have Nobody won't hold me anymore And it finally lets me free Where will I go? Will the trade winds take me south Through Georgia grain Or tropical rain Or snow from the heavens Will I join with the ocean blue Or run into a savior true And shake hands laughing And walk through the night Straight to the light Holding the love I've known in my life And no heart 